Today's drill or exercise is in regard to edges, how the watercolorist uses the media to create a variety of edges. I'm going to be using a pine tree as a motif in four different uh, small paintings. What you see me doing now is applying a, a color to the paper. The paper is dry and the brush is fully loaded. The, the, br the brush has a lot of liquid in it. We call this dry onto, I'm sorry, wet onto dry. And this is the way most of us learn to paint with watercolors. Uh, we work on dry paper where we, where we have control of the image and uh, we can achieve a sort of image that uh, we like. It's easier this way. The second stage is called dry into wet. And you see me wetting the paper, putting a light gray wash, and I'm going to be painting into that two different trees, one tree in the distance, one nearby. Uh, and in the, I'm working with a brush that has relatively little liquid in it. So I, I load the brush and then take a good deal of it out by painting the uh, uh, scrap paper or uh, the side of my board. And so my brush has pigment in it, but the pigment is the water content of that pigment is very little. So you see that the strokes that I make, even though it's a rather light tone, and my board is at an incline, the, the stroke is remaining. It's not moving around. It's expanding a little bit with soft edges, but it's going to hold its form as a tree through the until it dries. This next tree, darker pigment, but also a relatively dry brush and uh, using, I'm using burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And this tree is bigger, near, nearer to us in the foreground, uh, thus darker, but all the edges are soft. And so the, when this dries, it's going to have a feeling of uh, kind of a foggy day or a misty day or light snow falling. And uh, since this page is wet, there's a couple of things that we can do. As it's drying, uh, we can take a blade and, and scratch out some grass or some branches if we wanted to. In this case, I'm just doing some grass at the bottom. Those white marks bring back the lightness of the paper, and they'll remain there until it dries also. We have to do this with the right timing, not too early, not too late. Too early, and the mark will flood and we won't see it too late and nothing happens. This tech next technique is not necessarily suited to pine trees, more like clouds and such, but I've spot wetted the paper. I have put water in places and left it dry in others and now I'm painting a, a pine tree into that. And uh, what the result of, of this technique is in some places we get that soft edge the diffuse edge, and in some places we get a hard, firm edge. So we feel a push-pull type effect in this painting. Uh, some parts will advance, other parts will recede. In both the previous painting and this painting, there's a feeling that the object exists in an atmosphere. The first painting that we did, it almost feels like it was cut and pasted onto the paper. There's not much interaction between the atmosphere and the painting. This last technique is dry brush. It's a favorite of mine. I use a rough paper and a very uh, dry brush to kind of scumble or run the brush over the surface. It's, uh, the pigment falls on the hills and the valleys are white so that uh, we get this uh, shimmering quality to the image that we paint and we get a feeling of texture as well. In this case it's almost reminiscent of snowfall falling in front of our subject and so there's a feeling that the atmosphere is the atmosphere is interacting with our pine tree. In other words it's snowing around our pine tree. Uh, there's a lot of control in applying the paint this way and you get some very unique effects that you can use for rock surfaces or shimmering water or uh, snowfall in this case. 
a variety of things that uh, become uh, potential for this technique. On dry paper with a brush that has very little pigment. So uh, we take advantage of the the surface of the paper in this case. It does not work well with hot press paper. Also yeah, with this technique and the previous two, the stroke reads very well, the brush stroke that we're applying. Notice how the edges are soft in the last three but very hard in the first one. Notice how the edges vary in each one. Firm, hard in the first, very soft in the next one, broken in the third, and rough in the fourth.